Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. I'm your host, J.K. Amazi, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, I'm going to be giving you a sneak peek into the Reboot Intensive Group Coaching Program, and I'll be sharing a little bit of one of our powerful tools known as the Withdrawal Eliminator Method. Now, understanding what happens biologically when you are addicted to pornography and go through withdrawal is one of the first steps in going through a reboot. Normally, one of the words we hear from individuals who are talking about recovery is the word dopamine. Dopamine this, dopamine that, dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Well, there's a little more to it than that. See, the chemicals which are produced in our body regulate all our emotional states. Now, you want to feel good or even better when you give up porn and compulsive masturbation, don't you? Well, in order to feel better, you've got to understand the neurochemicals involved in your various emotional states, particularly those involved in your sexual behavior before you can manage them. Now, most of us men had our first exposure to pornography before we were in any sort of sexual relationship. It was, in essence, our first relationship And I would go as far as to call it your first girlfriend. See, porn was there helping you through the tough times. You know, she was there for you when you were lonely and when you were stressed out, when you were rejected, when life was hard, when you were seeking intimacy. And you became so dependent on her that now your body and brain has gotten so used to it that you need just a little taste of it to feel normal. Well, what's a taste of it? It's when you commit to no longer watching pornography, but still look up explicit images or still find yourself spending time fantasizing about scantily clad women on social media, or you find yourself reading erotic books or looking for movies online which contain sex scenes. That's the little taste you crave when you're trying to quit porn. Your body craves the chemical release which comes from this and it will feel as if it's missing something. Now, until your body and brain gets used to the fact that you will no longer have access to pornography and no longer compulsively masturbate, you are going to experience the pain of withdrawal. The moment you decide that you are going to get a taste, a host of activities begins in your brain. And it is important to understand what is happening biologically in your brain to fully grasp the benefit of the withdrawal eliminator method from the reboot intensive. There are five chemicals and hormones involved in your porn and masturbation addiction. The first is testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone which prepares the body for sexual encounters. Now, testosterone release is a hormonal process and is triggered by the brain as a response to environmental changes. Dopamine is the next neurochemical. And dopamine is what directs us to quote-unquote resolve the tension that is being produced by viewing sexual images. And this is the reason why it is emphasized so much, almost to the point of excluding other chemicals which are involved in this process. Now, norepinephrine, and I might be completely butchering the pronunciation, is a chemical cousin to adrenaline. And what it does is that it helps the brain remember how your sexual urges are being met. It stores memories of every sexual event. It's kind of like a videographer documenting every sexual event. And the rush that you experience when viewing pornography is actually from dopamine and norepinephrine working together. It's also relevant to note that adrenaline is usually released with its little quote-unquote cousin, norepinephrine. Now, endogenous opiates, which means opiates which are natural to your body and produced in your body are released during orgasm. And what they do is they actually determine your addiction pattern. Yes, you heard that right. Your brain literally produces its own opiates to provide relief from pain and for pleasure. And this is where that runner's high phenomenon comes from. When you experience euphoria due to the release of opiates. Now, if we break this down in steps, Here's what your porn addiction and masturbation addiction process looks like. Step one, you feel anger. You feel stressed or lonely or insecure or you feel bored. Step two, 
your brain begins to search for sexual cues in the environment, or it fantasizes if it can't find any sexual cues. Step three, once a sexual cue is identified, testosterone is produced. Step four, the regions of your brain which are sensitive to testosterone trigger the release of dopamine. Step five, dopamine then demands release via pornography or masturbation or any other sort of sexually acting out behavior. Step number six, you now watch porn act out sexually. Step number seven, you are now going through the stimuli as you watch pornography or masturbate, which prepares your body for a strong sexual response. And step number eight, you masturbate to orgasm. Step number nine, those endogenous opiates are released and that is the sexual response. And step number 10, due to this strong euphoric response, it is stored in your memory via norepinephrine, which as I mentioned before, is present throughout the process, kind of like a videographer, recording the entire thing. Next time you experience poor self-esteem, anger, depression, or anything else, this process repeats again from the second step. Now, in the Porn Reboot system, we develop processes to identify, to prevent, to interrupt, and to redirect the actions that occur in each of those steps, which I mentioned, with the ultimate goal of rewiring your brain to no longer go through these 10 steps. Moving forward, let's dive into some of the aspects of the Withdrawal Eliminator method. Now, there are four aspects to this process within the Porn Reboot system. The first is timeline. The second is support. The third is mindset, and the fourth is commitment. Let's start with timeline. The truth is we all hate the shame and guilt of relapses. I mean, I get it, brothers. You know, it sucks to tell your wife, your girlfriend, or your accountability partner that you relapsed yet again. And it's so defeating to entertain the thoughts that you may never be free of this behavior. You know, that feeling that comes up, you're like, man, I screwed up again. Maybe this is it. Maybe I can never beat this behavior. See, many of us relapse during the withdrawal phase of our reboot. It's important to understand that your brain and body has to get used to living without constantly releasing neurochemicals and hormones at high levels. Your brain literally has to change as it adjusts to a drastically reduced amount of chemicals which are released by porn and masturbation. The longer your addiction, the longer your initial withdrawal period. And this is because you've created more receptors in your brain for certain neurochemicals. You need to reduce the number of receptors to a normal amount. Most recovering men who are rebooting experience withdrawal symptoms from anywhere from 90 days to six months, with a handful experiencing some intermittent symptoms nine months to a year into their reboot. When you are mentally prepared for withdrawals, brothers, you are less likely to take your reboot for granted. Now, as your brain adjusts to the lack of neurochemicals and reduces the number of receptors, you experience cravings which increase in intensity over time. A lot of men send me messages asking, how long will I be experiencing these urges and strong cravings for? It's such a huge cause of concern. And the truth is you cannot speed up this process, but you can manage the intensity of your cravings. And you can also take certain steps to ensure that your withdrawal period does not negatively impact your day-to-day -day responsibilities. And I know this might sound discouraging to some of you, but the truth is you have to give your brain the time it needs to rewire itself. Now, one of the methods that we've developed to ensure that your withdrawal period does not negatively impact your day-to-day -day life involves controlled dosages of certain supplements, legal supplements, I might mention, <laughs> certain supplements and herbs during the withdrawal period to stimulate the release of neurochemicals while your brain adjusts. Now, there are certain supplements which bind to specific receptors for a longer period of time, allowing you to have more control over some emotional states which would otherwise be inaccessible or absolutely distracting during your withdrawal. So what supplementing does is that it allows you to perform optimally at work, to maintain a level of normalcy for short periods of time 
during you know social activities. It helps you get restful sleep at night because one of the symptoms of withdrawal is also insomnia. And it allows you in some cases to maintain a reasonable sex life, especially when you're going through the flatline period and not experiencing any sexual urges at all. I want to make it absolutely clear, brothers, supplementing means just that. A supplement to the remaining three aspects of the withdrawal eliminator method that I'm going to share with you. It simply makes the timeline more bearable. You will still experience cravings. The topic of supplementing is something that is covered in depth within the Reboot Intensive. The second aspect of the withdrawal eliminator method is support. If you do not have in-depth knowledge of withdrawal, awareness of your emotions, and some sort of method to record your progress, you simply cannot go through withdrawal alone. This is the reality, brothers. The problem with many men is that some of you are out there assuming that you are smarter and possess more willpower than you actually do. My question to you, brother, is how long are you going to play this game? This game of thinking that you've got it. Then you go through the reboot process, one month, two months, boom, you slip again. Then you're like, oh no, something happened. It was, it, I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't aware. Let me try this again. You refuse to realize that your willpower cannot carry you through. You need some sort of system. Again, it doesn't have to be mine, but you can't just wing it. See, your cravings bring up negative emotions, shame and guilt primarily. Now, shame thrives in isolation, and make no mistake about it, brothers, the urge to isolate will be high, especially when you feel irritable, when you feel fatigued, when you feel antisocial and unable to concentrate, very distracted all the time, which are some of the main symptoms of withdrawal. Now, withdrawal symptoms must be identified daily and shared with a group or with your accountability partner. Encouragement, stories of overcoming certain symptoms and accountability with your boundaries are necessary parts of the support aspect of the withdrawal eliminator method. The third aspect is mindset. Now, once you have a firm grasp of timeline and you've established support, you need the right mindset. And this is where most men fall flat on their faces. Now, I could record an entire audiobook on the subject of mindset as it relates to withdrawal. But for the purpose of this message, I'm going to summarize the basic concept to understand when establishing withdrawal mindset. And I call this detachment from your biology. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Porn Reboot System's concept of true and trial rebooters. If you're not, here's a quick a recap on that. True rebooters are men who, when they come into the system, they have accepted the fact that pornography has provided many wonderful things for them. Pornography may have even taught them how to have sex, albeit not the most healthy sex, but it was their first introduction to it. They may never have been able to find a vagina if they did not view pornography. Sometimes pornography had made them more open-minded and accepting of other people. Pornography had comforted them in very tough times when they really had nothing else to lean on. But they have also accepted the fact that pornography has played its role in their life and it can no longer be there because right now it's at a point where it's actually damaging their life. They have made peace with that and they are ready to let go of pornography permanently. In a nutshell, that's a true rebooter. Now, a trial rebooter. It's an individual who gets into the system, and although they have experienced a lot of pain that has been inflicted on them by pornography and masturbation and the out-of-control sexual behavior, deep down, although they want to end this behavior, they hope that one day they will be able to still view pornography in moderation. They still crave to be a quote-unquote normal guy they have still not made their peace with pornography. And this usually means that they have other issues that need to be resolved. So that's the difference between a true and a trial rebooter. Now, when it comes to the withdrawal mindset, true rebooters have already accepted the fact that they are probably going to slip at some point before they even begin. 
but they begin anyway. They're like, yeah, I'm probably going to slip a couple of times, but that's the way this game is played. So they begin. Trial rebooters, on the other hand, treat each attempt to reboot as their final attempt. You gather up so much energy because you are so upset and let down by the last time that you relapsed. So you gather everything and you're like, this is my one and only chance to reboot and get through this crazy withdrawal period. Thus, the message that you end up sending yourself when you almost inevitably give in to your cravings is, you know what, it's over. That's it. I'm done. This was my final shot and I gave it my best shot. I'm never going to beat this. I gave this everything I had. That's the message you give yourself prior to beginning. So for a trial rebooter, your journey ends as soon as you experience a bump in the road. And this leads to feelings of sadness, depression, and frustration. Now here's the messed up part. Unfortunately, during the withdrawal stage of your reboot, some of your receptors might be oversensitive or insensitive to a specific neurochemical. And extreme negative emotions such as that attached to giving up or quitting, causes the response to the release of these neurochemicals to be either inadequate or excessive. And this either increases a craving drastically or it extends the length of a negative emotion. So an example would be that strong feeling of disappointment from a slip that a trial rebooter experiences because he really thinks that this is his final attempt and he screwed it up. So that strong feeling of disappointment then lasts for days and eventually becomes an underlying state of depression. Basically, a trial rebooter's mindset is attached to his biology. Meanwhile, the true rebooter may give in to cravings, but he already knew that this may happen. So what he does is he quickly adjusts and he keeps moving without causing much disruption to the complex system of neurotransmitters in the brain. He's not vacillating between strong emotions. He still experiences cravings. He still experiences negative emotions, but none of them are excessive. A true rebooter's mindset is detached. It is separate from his biology. The fourth aspect of the withdrawal eliminator method is commitment. Now there's no need to sugarcoat it, brothers. Going through the withdrawal stage of your reboot is very challenging. And I want you to know that thousands of men have made it through this stage and they have progressed to the point of full recovery from their porn and masturbation addiction. So you are in the right place as you sit or you drive, whatever you're doing while you're listening to this podcast. Now, a common theme among men who have fully rebooted is their absolute and utter commitment to rebooting. I have seen this over and over again. In fact, I've seen it to the point that I can get on the first call with a man and I know how far he's going to go. Some men actually confuse self-belief with commitments. So you can absolutely believe that you are capable of accomplishing anything, yet accomplish nothing. And that's the reason why so many men with great self-belief are either in prison or in mental institutions. Now, self-belief is important. It's a wonderful thing, but it's more common than many of us think. Many people grew up in healthy families with great role models, and parents who instill the strong sense of self-belief in them. That doesn't make you a good person. It's not really a value that is prized above all others. Commitment, in my opinion, is worth a lot more, especially when it comes to your reboot. And as I've mentioned before, commitment is doing something you said you were going to do long after the emotion you experienced when you said you would do it has passed. I'll say it one more time for those in the back. Commitment is doing something you said you were going to do long after the emotion you experienced when you said you would do it has passed. And true rebooters have made a habit of proceeding in spite of their emotions. And there you have it, brothers. 
That's a brief introduction, a brief overview of the withdrawal eliminator method. I hope you found it helpful. Brothers, whenever you are ready, there are two ways that I can help you at this time of the year. The first way is if you have not downloaded my free ebook, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men, there's a link to it in the description below the podcast. And secondly, if you are done, if you are looking at yourself and you're going like, listen, 2019 is almost over and I am done with this BS. I'm done with trying and failing. I'm done with watching my life fall apart around me. I'm done with the shame and the guilt. I'm done with underachieving. If you're done and you're like, JK, I want to get on a call with you. I want to find out what's going on. And I want to be in control of my behavior by Christmas this year. Brothers, there is a link to complete a survey and then schedule a call with me. I'm only going to be taking calls from eight men over the next couple of days. Brothers, if you are serious about this and you are over the age of 25, go ahead, fill out the survey and book a call with me. I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later in the week.